In the news tonight, we have the latest on COVID-19 infections rattling Fiji. Police say they don't have fine details and Silver City to get a spread out. From the studios of FBC Suva, Ritika Pratap. Good evening, Fiji. We start off with our COVID-19 coverage tonight as Fiji continues to grapple with increase in cases, with today's figures standing at 404 with one confirmed death. We join Kritika Kumar live. Kritika, seems like the cases are growing and some still not listening. Kritika, Fiji has uh, once again hit the 400 mark and five deaths have been recorded. One death has been confirmed as a COVID death, while the other has passed away due to underlying health conditions. Three deaths are currently under investigation. Our seven-day daily test positivity has increased to 9.5% and it continues to trend upwards. This uh, national test positivity is almost double the World Health Organization's threshold, which is 5%. Now, despite the escalating number of cases, people continue to disregard the COVID-safe measures and protocols in place. This video has been circulating on social media. And in this video, we can see two men are sharing cigarette. The two are believed to be frontliners. It is believed that due to continuous disregard of COVID-safe measures and protocols in place, there has been widespread transmission in the Lamino Sori containment area. Ritika. Thank you, Kritika. The Ministry of Health was prepared for any scenario before the COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine was rolled out. Vaccination Task Force Head Dr. Rachel Davis says they have been keeping records of the adverse events of vaccine side effects. Dr. Davis says they are also trying to investigate all the positive cases and their vaccination status. Kritika Kumar reports. The Vaccination Task Force Head says frontliners after getting jabs tested positive, however, did not end up in the hospital. And those who were positive, none of them ended up in the hospitals. They were majority asymptomatic mm -hmm. or, you know, didn't uh, need any hospitalizations or anything like that. Dr. So Devi says they have investigated some cases. However, Fiji has not recorded any blood clot issues. And uh, we have had, uh, I think, a few, one or two allergy reactions, um, um, and which we responded well to and uh, was uh, over. And we, we know... Uh, that's one of the reasons why we've got medical backup on sites as well for vaccinations. Epidemiologist Fiona Russell says blood clot is very rare and with the active transmission in Fiji, it is vital to highlight the benefits of the vaccine. And just to bear in mind that also um, this condition mainly, if it does occur, you know, extremely rare, but if it does occur, it mostly would occur after the first dose and between four and 30 days after the first dose. It's extremely, even more rarely likely to occur after the second dose. So far, Fiji has inoculated 52.6% of the targeted population with the first dose of the vaccine and 49,121 individuals have received their second dose. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. A sport fines for those breaching COVID safe protocols is yet to be enforced. Police say the courts will continue to act as a remedy for now. With infection, infections surpassing the 400 mark again today, the Acting Commissioner of Police says it worries them that people continue to breach measures. Apanisa Wangarandovu reports face masks are compulsory in all containment areas. The Acting Police Chief says no figure has been confirmed for sport fines as they await to enforce it. At this point, uh, we are taking them to court. Well, the court will uh, decide on the fines. We haven't done that um, infringement notice uh, that has already uh, been uh, passed in Parliament. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, the regulations and uh, the other administrative process that goes with it. Tundrabu says this does not stop them from charging and taking people to court. We are stepping up on it and uh, uh, we will be processing uh, and um, taking in people. Uh, that are not uh, adhering to that uh, directive. This is uh, not wearing of masks and improperly uh, wearing of masks in a public place uh, within the lockdown and containment areas. Wear your mask properly at all times. The only time that you are allowed to take off your mask if you are within your home with your normal household family members. Any other place, please keep your mask on. The Permanent Secretary for Health says documents are now with the Secretary-General 
indicating the police may soon start imposing fines on those breaching measures. Apinisao Grandovo, FBC News. The Suba City Council's plan to decontaminate the city is coming to fruition after receiving four new gasoline mist blower disinfection equipment. Special Administrator's Chair Isikeli Tukundundu says the assistance from Cecilia Laisani Kale, a concerned Fijian who resides along Princess Road in Suva, comes at the right time. He adds the equipment will boost the Council's quest to contain the spread of COVID-19 particularly at various hot spots. These include the bus stand, municipal markets and shops that have been given the green light to resume operations. We are you know, fighting against the new variant, which is very contagious, the Delta variant. Uh, we will, because it's the uh, spray that is mechanical, it will come in very handy for us, especially uh, for Suva, because of uh, the... Uh, Type of structures that we have in Suva. If anybody, everybody can donate and do their own uh, machine and spray their own areas and then share it with other people, and it would be a great help to the government. And with COVID-19 continuing to grow, the Reserve Bank has forecast a gloomy economic future for this year. We join Kelly Vadala live. Kelly, what is the State Bank saying tonight? Critical chances of an economic recovery this year is further declining due to the fast spread of COVID-19. In its latest release, the Reserve Bank of Fiji says that the lockdowns in Vitilevu and also the restrictions on certain uh, economic activity and the movement of people has further affected our economy as well. The Reserve Bank also says that the high unemployment and underemployment situation has worsened from last year. This year, the economy is uh, forecast to contract by 19.8 percent. As of now, a large part uh, depends on achieving herd immunity, so we need to ramp up our vaccination efforts. Ritika. And to our latest COVID-19 update. <music> 404 new cases of COVID-19 have been reported today. These new cases are mainly from the central and western divisions. But there are two cases that have been identified at the Malau quarantine facility in Lumbasa. Fiji has recorded 4,779 cases since April of this year. There are now 3,896 active cases in isolation with 918 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll now stands at 23. Up ahead, Singatoka villages on high alert. And student learning takes new twist. Stay with us. Welcome back. Fijians in the greater Singatoka area, particularly along the coral coast, are becoming more attentive and vigilant with their movements. Toranga Nikoro of Votualaile village in Nanronga, William Erasova says they are on high alert as over 100 COVID-19 positive patients are currently being isolated at the Blue West Villas and the Outrigger Fiji Beach Resort in Singatoka. Josiah Nanunga reports surveillance is also high in both facilities to avoid the risk of the virus spreading to nearby communities. What used to be a shopping honeypot for these neighboring villages is near sitting idle, as people along the Coral Coast are now traveling to Singatoka or Korolevu to do their shopping. We do our shopping at the shopping mall in Maulbe. Since the shopping center is located near to the quarantine facility, most people have feared about their lives. The owner of Blue West Villas in Maui Bay says security in the quarantine premises has been stringent since day one. The military has been extremely good in doing their part, keeping everybody in the resort. And then we have our security on the outside, making sure that nobody breaches the quarantine um, area. Military and health officials are closely monitoring and facilitating the need of over 100 patients on quarantine at the Outrigger Fiji Beach Resort. So being such a large property there, we're able to differentiate uh, the area that's been allocated for the patients versus the area where things like meals, etc. are prepared. With the increasing number of cases daily, the two resorts expect more positive patients to be quarantined at both facilities in Singapore. 
Rosovo, however, says they will continue to enforce stringent restrictions at the village level for their safety. Chosayinamunga, FBC News. Four people have been taken in police custody over the alleged murder of a 22-year-old man at Prince Charles Park in Nandi. The incident happened on Wednesday night. Police confirmed the seven who were brought in earlier are still in custody. A post-mortem of the deceased was expected to be conducted today. Police had responded to a report of a fight at Prince Charles Park and found a group of people drinking alcohol. The victim was found lying unconscious with visible injuries. Officers rushed him to the Nandi Hospital. However, the victim was pronounced dead on arrival. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to take its toll on families, couples are turning to counselling for help. The Reproductive and Family Health Association of Fiji says the issue of job losses leading to a lack of income is causing a lot of domestic disputes and mental stress. Kerry Vadala reports. COVID-19 restrictions and lockdowns have sharply increased issues of physical and emotional challenges. We've come across a few of those eh, that uh, because of the hardship that they're facing, uh, you know, some of them, the men are laid off or the woman is laid off from her work. And there's, uh, you know, some kind of challenges facing the family. Eh? The clinic has also seen an increase in women accessing family planning services. They were not planning to, have, uh, to be pregnant and then the, it happens. And then, you know, sometimes that causes problem in the family, but uh, we sit them down and then we explain to them. And we are receiving calls uh, for relationship and family related issues. And that also involves gender based violence. We are also receiving calls from parents, you know, in regards to parenting related concerns. The organization says Fijians are seeing the consequences of COVID not only on the health system but in their family setting as well. They're urging Fijians to reach out and get assistance if need be. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. Parents who are homeschooling their children amidst this pandemic have been able to develop an alternative learning environment. This has been made possible through a Kids Leader Program series, which allow children to learn about some of the key issues surrounding the country, such as COVID-19 crisis, climate change and drug abuse. Jeshulal has more. The Kids Leader Program series provides interactive communication lessons for students. As part of COVID-19, where we heard the plight and frustrations of parents who were staying home, working as well as homeschooling their children. So in June last year, we introduced a Kids Lead Up program. And children who have gone through that program are then exposed to various speakers as well as, uh, you know, topical interests. Meanwhile, the Fiji Sun has been printing out education worksheets for students every day in the newspaper to enhance their homeschool learning since schools are closed nationwide, which has received positive feedback. Uh, it has helped uh, a lot during this uh, pandemic while at home by keeping uh, our kids occupied and engaged and uh, all the time. Eh? The eight-page lift out is to assist parents and students who are unable to access these learning resources through online platforms. Jeshulal, FBC News. And later in sports, Fiji Touch Rugby utilizing break in sports. Welcome back. Rate paying process have been affected during this outbreak. This was confirmed by Suba City Council Special Administrator Isikeli Tikondondua. However, the disruption does not affect the council's ability to carry out the services required by rate payers. Tikondondua says that technological advancements have allowed them for direct payments. We have seen a slowdown. But we've been fortunate because a lot of rate payers now are using the technology on uh, MPISA and all the other uh, uh, direct uh, payment instead of physically uh, presenting themselves to uh, the office. The Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association has requested that current levels of taxes and duties levied on the industry 
remain for at least three years. This was part of the association's submission during budget consultation where it also asked for financial support through government initiatives. Lina Ruiz reports that in order for the budget incentives to work, the industry must first survive the current crisis to emerge safer and ready to do business. Chief Executive Fantasha Lockington says the association is focusing on recovery and revitalization ahead of the budget announcement next month. Sure that we understand exactly when we're going to open. Um, it's all very well to say that uh, we need to have you know, a certain number of the population vaccinated, but we must have an understanding for businesses to prepare and plan for when this reopening is actually going to happen. Is it you know, six months down the line? Is it going to be in December or January? The Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation says time is of the essence and people need to be encouraged to get vaccinated to allow for businesses to resume and the economy to recover. The whole objective is that we protect local employment. The Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association confirms that tourism in Fiji has been at a standstill for about 16 months. Meanwhile, the 2021-2022 national budget is scheduled to be announced on July 16th. Lina Rees, FBC News. Here are the local exchange rates as said early this morning. The Fiji dollar was again down against the Chinese yuan, the US dollar and also against the Kina and the Euro. Commodities today saw crude oil rise again to end at 75.07 a barrel. Gold rose by over a dollar to close at $1,775 per ounce and silver was down to $26.12. And uh, Sinifa from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money market. Good evening. The U.S. dollar has started the month on a solid footing after closing its best month in four and a half years. Today the dollar is resting at 15-month high on a yen and multi-month peaks against other major peers. The jobs report is due later tonight and is forecast to show a solid rise of 700,000. But there is chatter about the number coming in higher and the risk that upsets the assumption that U.S. interest rates can stay at rock bottom levels for years. The dollar has climbed 0.7% against the yen this week and hit its highest since March 2020 as investors have reassessed short dollar positions following months of strong data and a hawkish shift in tone from the Federal Reserve. It's worth noting that a strong outcome may push the U.S. Fed closer towards the much-awaited monetary policy adjustment and may help the U.S. dollar to add more gains. That's all from your HFC Bank for this week. Have a safe weekend. Prime Minister Wurenge Mbaini Marama stresses that Fiji and New Zealand's partnership aspires to promote regional solidarity. Mbaini Marama highlighted this in a meeting he had with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. He also reiterated that an enduring partnership between Fiji and New Zealand is the foundation for achieving shared goals and aspirations in areas such as resilient health care, peace and security, climate change and disaster resilience economic reform and joint advocacy on Pacific priorities. Mani Marama thanked the New Zealand government for its swift mobilization of support to Fiji with the provision of personal protective equipment PPE and economic relief package estimated at $14 million. And more recently the deployment of New Zealand medical professionals as part of the medical assistant team to work alongside Fiji's healthcare professionals in tracking and containing COVID-19. That is the latest from my end, but coming up after the break, backing it up, teachers start new way of helping. Stay with us. While the flying Fijians hope to continue where they left off at the Autumn Nations Cup six months ago with a comprehensive victory over Georgia, they accept it's easier said than done. More so going up against the All Blacks after a decade. However, Coach Vern Carter is optimistic. He's got a good mix of players capable of building on that momentum. Karleni Tavi has more. 
Players like Leone Nakarawa help build more depth in the squad. One of the things we wanted to do was just have continuity from, from our tour up in Europe. Simone Curavoli who comes back to the team, a young player from the island. There is a good mixture. Head coach Vern Cotter will be building on its core players. Key figures are still there. Uh, Nemani Nadolo, there's um, um, Frank Lamani, um, there's Sam Maravesi. There's, there's a core group of players that have played a lot for for the Flying Fijians. The Flying Fijians' first test against the All Blacks is next Saturday in Dunedin, followed by the second in Hamilton a week later. Carly Ditavi, FBC Sport. Training amidst the pandemic with the limited resources is not what Yosef Rakesa imagined his Paralympic preparation would be. But despite the limitations, Rakesa is determined to put on a good show when he represents Fiji in the shot put and javelin event at his first Paralympic Games. Venina Rakautonga has won. Standing up on the podium to get a medal for Fiji is the goal for the 25-year-old. Uh, we have to improvise now with whatever we have. I have my set of training equipment at home, just a few to help me train, and I train with Coach Fred, who has been very helpful. Uh, we will have to deal with uh, whatever we're facing here in Fiji. At the moment, he's training with me, no sorry, uh, coming daily from Suva. Um, we're just hoping that uh, the lockdown uh, comes to an end soon. Yosefo says he's looking forward to competing against top athletes around the world. I have prepared well and I'm thankful that through all the struggles I will continue to try my best and make Fiji proud. Rakesa will compete in the Paralympic Games which begins on August 24th. Venina Rakautonga, FBC Sports. Despite the restrictions in place, one sporting body that's been busy is the Touch Federation of Fiji. They've managed to draw some positives from the current situation by upskilling its players and officials over the last two months. Akuladama has more. The pandemic has failed to deter Touch Fiji from thinking outside the box. We've basically done accreditation for 56 of our uh, level one coaches, and uh, you know we will step into the uh, practical side of it, and then thereafter we will try to graduate them to the next level, which is level two and level three. DFF is taking this approach because they are not sure whether there'll be any sports action again this year. If the communities don't uh, respond positively to what the request has been made, then we're looking at a worst case scenario that we basically throw the whole sporting calendar year of 2021 out the window because there will be no engagement. Any return to sports is going to be a gradual situation according to the Fiji Sports Commission. In the first case, it will be maybe non-contact sports can will be able to start. But I don't think we'll be allowing people into stadiums to watch those sports uh, until we ensure that it is safe for them to be there. Last year, there were no sports activities in the country after the first COVID-19 case was confirmed in March and only started later in the year. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Squash Fiji noted a good increase in female participation in the sport this year. Before the second wave of COVID-19 brought competitions to an abrupt end, it recorded double the regular number of participants at its women's only open. The association's interim president, Michael Irava, says the numbers indicate a promising future for women in the sport in Fiji. If we have a uh, squash open, we usually would, on average, would probably get anywhere from maybe 15 to 20, sometimes even 25 if we're lucky, to get women to uh, join. When we had the women's only open, we had a record number of 52 entries with the most senior uh, player uh, coming in at the age of 54. Ukraine striker Artem Bazdin has been ruled out of the Euro 2020 quarterfinal clash with England, leaving coach Andriy Shevchenko digging deep to find a suitable replacement. Bazdin suffered a knee injury after being caught by defender Marcus Danielson's high boot during yesterday's 2-1 last 16 win over Sweden. With the Euro quarterfinals starting tomorrow, in our play of the day, we take a unique look back at the best goal celebrations by managers at the tournament so far. In our quirky sport of the day, paddle tennis, a combination of squash and tennis, popular in Latin American countries.
And that's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in Weird and Wonderful, retiree strikes up unlikely friendship with a pigeon. Details after the break. to look at the weather for today. Been a cloudy day for most places around the country. Now to the west was mainly a fine day. Eastwards from Peck Harbour to Suva, it was mostly cloudy throughout. Moving to the north, some showers and isolated thunderstorms. Places we will be checking out are Navua, Rakiraki and Bua and all had cooler conditions than anticipated. At sea, moderate to rough seas with moderate to fresh southeasterly winds. Next high tide is at 1.30 tomorrow morning, sunrise at 6.38. For tomorrow, cloudy with brief showers over the eastern and interior parts of Viti Levu, Vanua Levu, Tavuni, Kandavu, Lau and Lomai Viti Group. Fine apart from afternoon or evening showers over rest of Vanua Levu. Sunday will be fine apart from brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of Viti Levu, Vanua Levu, Tavuni, Kandavu, elsewhere mainly fine, cool at night. A beautiful sun rising as seen from Naimbulu Dreketi Sri from Nazula Seawall and site in Dreketi Maduata, taken by Nardeo Babun. Remember to send us pictures, send it with a small description to our FBC News Facebook page. That's your weather tonight. It's back to Ritika. In Fijian Pulse, we ask which two teams from tomorrow's Euro 2020 quarterfinals will advance to the semis? Well, it will be a very interesting uh, quarterfinal matchup say, in the Euro 2020. And for the first quarterfinal, I pick a Spain over Switzerland. Switzerland will be a surprise package in this tournament, but uh, Spain uh, with experience can uh, take it uh, through. And for the second uh, quarterfinal, I pick Italy over Belgium. My thinking is um, Spain, and on the other side, it's going to be Italy. Belgium can uh, upset Italy, and uh, Spain will uh, get through to the final. Recapping our main stories, 404 cases including two in Malau with one confirmed death. Police say they don't have fine details and Suva City to get a spray down. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should vaccination be made compulsory to protect all Fijians? Send us newsworthy pictures and videos, email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it, share it with us via our various social media accounts. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. Good night.